afternoon, everybody. Just uh, and this is a very small number of, of uh, troops that are that are quote unquote deploying, um, and quite a few of them are actually just redeploying inside Europe, and that we have. 80,000 other troops in, in Europe. So the, the additions that we're making, uh, while the Secretary deems them uh, necessary to reassure our, the eastern flank of NATO, uh, they are but a small fraction of the, the total number of troops that we have in Europe and have been there, and have been there um, again, as part of our NATO commitments for a long time. There are, are uh, no active efforts in play to militarily evacuate American citizens from Ukraine. Uh, the State Department has been exceedingly consistent and clear uh, about warning Americans uh, from, from away from traveling to Ukraine. And the president himself just uh, the other day um, ad advised Americans to leave Ukraine, given the current tensions. Uh, so there's been plenty of time and opportunity. And it's, it's not a war zone. I mean, there, there, there's plenty of physical opportunities to uh, to remove yourself from Ukraine, including commercial air, railroads, good highways. There's lots of ways to, to leave. And, and all that is still at play right now. And again, we've said from the very get-go, there's there's no, no effort right now ongoing, uh, nothing that we're expecting to use military assets to move Americans out of Ukraine. That That's the same today. We, when the secretary decided to send leading elements of the 82nd Airborne, which we talked about very publicly. Um, we said from the very get-go that one of the reasons why we chose that unit is they're multi-mission and they're on a high alert readiness posture as it is. That's their job. That's what they do. And they do a lot of things really, really well, and they can do those things quickly. And we said, and the secretary said, in matter of fact, when he was up at this very podium, that uh, they are multi-mission capable and they're going to be ready to do a number of contingencies, including, and he was asked, you know, would that include evacuation? And he said, if that's what we're called to do, we're capable to do that. So I, I, I can't rule out the fact that uh, these soldiers could be used with some, to, in, in, to some degree with evacuation assistance on the other side of that border, um, and certainly they're going to be prepared to do that. If Americans that are in Ukraine heed the warnings that they have gotten from the State Department and from the President himself, there should be no need for the 82nd Airborne. Uh, to have to assist with evacuation assist, uh, uh, evacuation missions uh, if uh, if Americans that are in Ukraine are are, uh, are paying close attention to the to the warnings and the advisories that they've gotten and uh, and do the right thing while there's time to do it we believe there's still time and space for diplomacy we still believe that there's a headspace with mr. Putin that uh, that can be operated inside of we still believe that uh, that he hasn't made a final decision. And so a, a lot of what we're doing, not just what we're doing, but how we're talking about what we're doing, is designed um, to make it very clear where the United States national security interests are and what we're trying to achieve here. In a nutshell, what we're trying to achieve here is a de-escalation of the tensions and a diplomatic path forward. And, and virtually everything that we've done, everything I've set up here, and quite frankly, everything I've not set up here uh, is designed to, to help us get to um, a better outcome, a peaceful outcome, a diplomatic outcome. Uh, nobody wants to see, except with the exception of possibly Mr. Putin, uh, any military conflict breaking out uh, in Europe.